Hello class and welcome to today's English lesson. So we are working towards an amazing piece of writing which we're going to be doing today. So today is going to be kind of the culmination of all the lessons we've done over the last couple of weeks and all the work that you've put in and all your brilliant ideas all coming together in one amazing piece of writing, which is going to be a description of the setting of the film Today O Jones. So yesterday you had a look at this text. This was an example of a setting description opening called The Crypt. Uh, so let me read it to you. After every turn, there are our pitch black winding tunnels, which are as long as the River Nile. Relentlessly, the cold airless rooms suffocate and strangle their victims. Crumbling debris is a cascading waterfall, breaking the eerie still silence. Enormous looming statues, which are as old as time, stand tall and all around the haunting wind screams my name. The aroma of damp earth lingers in the ancient crypt and frightening shadows leap and dance in the limelight, lamplight. Wow. <coughs> what an amazing description. I don't know about you, but even without seeing the film, I could read that and just completely picture what it was like, the mood, the way it looks. It brings all my senses alive and makes a really vivid picture in my mind. And that's what, as a writer, you want your reading, your writing to do for your reader. So let's have a look at this piece of writing. We'll break it down. Yesterday, you were asked to identify all the different features that you could see that we've worked on are in here and I've underlined some and colour coded them. I haven't underlined absolutely everything because there was masses in here, but let's just go through them. So in red here, after every turn, we've got an adverbial, okay? And then tells you where, after every turn, there are pitch black winding tunnels. Now I think that's quite clear, isn't it? Pitch black winding tunnels, that's an expanded noun phrase. The noun there being tunnels and pitch black are winding is the um, adjectives to describe that. So uh, we've got an ad fronted adverbial there, adverbial at the start of the sentence, followed by an expanded noun phrase. After every turn, there are pitch black winding tunnels, which are as long as the River Nile. Now, I hope I don't have to tell you what the purple line means there. What kind of writing is that? As long as the River Nile. It's a simile, it's comparing the tunnel to the River Nile. So it's, it's saying the tunnels are really, 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 really long. And instead of saying the tunnels are really, 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 really long, which is not very sophisticated writing, it's quite basic writing. And also it doesn't really help bring it alive for the reader. They've picked something which is actually really, really long, the River Nile, and compared it, it's as long as the River Nile. So that's a really good opening sentence, isn't it? About talking about the tunnels on the way in to the crypt. So it's guiding you through. Relentlessly, good adverbial at the beginning. The cold airless room. There's our expanded noun phrase again. The cold airless room. Two adjectives describing that one noun. Suffocate and strangle their victims. Hmm, now, what is that? suffocate and strangle their victims. It's talking about the rooms. The rooms suffocate and strangle their victims. Rooms can't actually do that. It's giving the room a human-like quality, but it's not using as or like, it's not comparing. It's saying that the rooms do do that, which is a metaphor. So there we've got adverbial, uh, expanded noun phrase and a metaphor. And let's put those two sentences together after every turn. There are pitch black winding tunnels, which are as long as the River Nile. Relentlessly, that means without giving up, without stopping, never stopping. The cold airless rooms suffocate and strangle their victims. So that really gives you such a picture of that when you go down the tunnels, like there's no fresh air, there's no windows, it's dark, it's enclosed. There's no fresh air that it smells stale and old, like it's been shut up for a really long time. So much so that it makes you catch your breath. It makes you feel uh, like you can't breathe. And that is a really uncomfortable feeling. 
So that already makes me think as a reader that this is a really uncomfortable, possibly dangerous place to be. That's a great way of making a reader feel something about what you're writing about. OK, let's move on. Crumbling debris. What's debris? Great word. Any idea what it is? Debris is like bits that fall off. OK, so crumbling debris is like bits that have fallen off and are lying around. So crumbling debris, expanded noun phrase, that's an exp the noun phrase, is a cascading waterfall breaking the eerie still silence. I love that. What this is basically saying is it's really quiet in the tomb. Bits of rock and dust fall down all the time. And stones and things and make a noise as they hit the floor and that breaks the silence of the tomb. So that's what it's really describing. But the way it does it is fantastic. Crumbling debris is a cascading waterfall. Cascading waterfall, that means a waterfall that's falling down and crashing. That's a metaphor because it's saying it is that, the debris, the dust and stones and brick and things that fall down are, are a waterfall breaking the eerie still silence. So that action of all the bits that are falling off the walls breaks the silence of the tomb makes a noise instead of just saying makes a noise it breaks the eerie still silence that's an expanded noun phrase enormous looming statues which are as old as time now we've worked on this particular sentence haven't we before so i hoped you could identify those enormous looming statues expanded noun phrase which are as old as time simile Stand tall and all around the haunting wind screams my name. Oh, that's a bit creepy, isn't it? The haunting wind screams my name. Now that's giving a human like quality. That's giving scream as a verb to the wind. It's saying the wind screams. Wind can't actually do that. But what it means is the noise of the wind screams my name just makes it seem a bit scary sometimes if if they're in the tomb, what it means is if he's hearing noises, it feels like that wind is calling to him, it's saying his name. That's a metaphor. The haunting wind screams my name. Love it. So put that all together into one amazing sentence. Enormous looming statues, which are as old as time, stand tall and all around the haunting wind screams my name. The aroma, what does aroma mean? Anyone know? It means smell. That's a great word to describe smell. So now it's bringing in those senses. It's talking about the senses. The aroma of damp earth lingers in the ancient crypt. Damp earth. That's really nice. That's going back to when we did the um, see, hear, feel um, and smell grid that you did. Uh, that's using some of those ideas of what could you smell instead of just saying I can smell damp earth. The aroma. Damp earth. It's a bit more sophisticated. The aroma of damp earth lingers, that means hangs around in the ancient crypt. Crypt is just another word for tomb. And frightening shadows, not just shadows, frightening shadows, leap and dance in the lamp light. That's saying that the shadows leap and dance. That's a metaphor, dance in the lamp light. So when you first read that text, you think, wow, that's amazing. There's no way I could ever write anything as really sophisticated and grown up as that. But actually, when you break it down, all the bits that are in that, all the little pieces of that jigsaw puzzle are all things that we've learned about. They're all things that we've talked about over the last couple of weeks. So there is no reason why you can't put all those pieces of the puzzle together to make an amazing piece of writing. You just have to take it one sentence at a time. Now, where, the way it's done it here is it started thinking about the Tadeo Jones's journey through the tomb. So how he's walking through the tunnels and then he goes into um, sort of it's a bit more enclosed as he goes up the stairs, he goes deeper into it. And then it's thinking about what he can see, what he can feel so he can hear eerie silence that's broken by things falling down, dust falling down, what he can see big tall statues, what he can smell, 
So you've almost got one sentence there about each of those senses, haven't you? And within that, they've just used a combination of an adverbial, an expanded noun phrase, a simile or a metaphor in each sentence. So that's the way you should approach your writing today. One sentence at a time. Just do it one sentence at a time and build it up slowly and think which of those different features should I put in this sentence and how can I arrange them in that sentence? Should I put the adverbial first or at the end of the sentence? Am I going to have an expanded noun phrase in there? Shall I put a simile or a metaphor? And then slowly each of those sentences come together to make one amazing big paragraph that describes the setting perfectly. So. Let's have a look at some of your ideas, because looking at some of your ideas that you've come up with already, I think will help you. So I've got some examples of some of the work that's, that some of you have been working on. I haven't been able to put everybody's work in here because that would take too long, I'm afraid. So I've just picked a few examples. So this is Alexia's work uh, from a couple of weeks ago when we did the see, hear, smell and feel and touch. Um, and I would recommend that you go back and look at that work that you've done to help you today. So here we've got pitch black endless tunnels, great expanded noun phrase, ancient marble statues, love it. eerie endless silence, that is great, falling dust. If you wrote a sentence about each of those, one about the tunnels, one about the silence or the falling dust, one about the smelly damp walls, one about the cold damp stone, four amazing sentences, about each of those expanded noun phrases would be amazing. Put them together, that makes one fantastic paragraph. And if you look back at the example I've given you, actually, that's all they've done. So that's a good starting point for inspiration, isn't it? Thank you, Alexia, for your wonderful expanded noun phrases. Right, let's look at Harry's ideas. Small, dark tunnel. Well done for having that comma in there between your adjectives as well. Small, creepy room, like it. Golden, precious statues. What I really like about Harry's work here is you can see that it's a work in progress, that he's done the writing and then he's gone back and he's edited it and he's thought about how can he make that work. He's changed a few words or he's corrected his spellings, but he's done that afterwards, that proofreading and editing afterwards. Golden, precious statue, I like that. Dusty old money slot. Now, see, he wrote to begin with, he wrote dusty old money holder. And then he's changed the word holder, improved it and put slot. Sharp, dangerous knife. Spooky, ancient, secret doorway. Oh, I like that one. A mysterious secret switch. Mysterious because we don't know yet what it actually does. Shiny golden cat. Great ideas, Harry. Those are brilliant expanded noun phrases and you could definitely include some of those in your writing. OK, here's some of Stella's similes and metaphors. So what Stella has done is she's picked something to describe and she's used a simile and a metaphor to describe each one. So let's start with the bricks. The crumbled bricks were as dusty as sand. Lovely simile. And a metaphor to describe the bricks instead. The bricks were hard bits of the desert. Nice. Simile, the cave was as black as the night and a metaphor, the boulder was the guard of the cave. Simile, Horace's arch is shaped like a key and a metaphor, Horace is the sky looking over us. I like that. Well done, Stella. OK, here's some of Thomas's ideas. Thomas had a lot of similes. Let's read through them. The dark winding tunnel was as dark as the night. Brilliant. Love it. The way to upscale that is to uh, swap dark, one of the darks for a different word so you don't have repetition of the same word twice in a sentence. That is brilliant. The jackal statue was as grey as dust. The tomb was like a beautiful church. The winding dark passage was as gloomy as a cold winter's day. The tomb was like the inside of an old abandoned church. Grey old stone walls were as cold as ice. Fantastic. The inside of the chest was as bright as the sun. The pillars of the tomb stood to attention like soldiers. The tomb was like a prison for the mummies. The mummy is as salty as the sea. Metaphors. 
The tomb was a prison to the mummies. The canopic jar is the guardian of the organs contains. Great ideas, Thomas. Really good. Okay, let's see what Fleur came up with. So here are Fleur's similes and metaphors. The eerie tunnel was as dark as night. The lifeless mummies were as creepy as cobweb doors. The sinister pharaoh was as scary as a bloodthirsty tyrant. Wow. The ancient stone slabs were as cold as, the, as ice underfoot. I really like that. So the stone slabs on the floor felt cold when you walked on them. Underfoot means underneath your feet. The exquisite death masks were like lighthouses guiding the spirits home. Mm. The precious wall paintings were like Egyptian encyclopedias. Metaphors. The never ending stairway was a path to another world. The tomb was a dingy basement. The torch embers were shimmering stars. The Egyptian mummy was a wrapped up present. Great work, Fleur. I love your ideas. Okay, here's some of Olivia's ideas. The tunnel is deep like a soul. The treasure box is as light as the sun. The treasure box was old like a lion. The Egyptians were as spooky as ghosts. The stairs were as clear as a feather. Well done, Olivia. That's fantastic ideas. So, <clears throat> here we go. This is what we've been building up to. We've been working towards this for the last few weeks. Today, you are going to use all the ideas you came up with last week in our last lesson to write an amazing description for the setting of this movie. OK, so you've got to go back over all your ideas. Think about your um, senses, see, hear, feel and, and touch and smell. And like I said, I would try and make one sentence for each of those senses that includes all the other things. Build it around those four sentences and work a sentence at a time. Craft each sentence and then put them together. Use the example of the crypt as a guide. What I don't want to see is you copying word for word what's already in the example I've given you. I want you to make it your own, use your own ideas. Look back at your writing from the last two weeks because you have already done all the hard work. You have already come up with similes and metaphors and personification. You have already come up with um, adverbial phrases. You've done all of that work. You just need to bring it all together now. Get all the different pieces of the puzzle, bring them all together. And last week's lesson where you were coming up brainstorming ideas, those are all your ideas where you're putting together everything. Take those and refine them, make them better, pick your favourite ones and put them together into one paragraph that's an amazing description of the whole two. You must include the features that we have covered so far. Senses, expanded noun phrases, similes, metaphors, personification and adverbial phrases. Okay. Now, on the end of this teaching video, you're going to have a treat. When you have finished your writing, you can come back to this video and watch the whole of the Tadeo Jones movie. If you haven't seen the whole thing, I hope you haven't all seen the whole thing uh, because you didn't want to spoil it. It's a really, really good movie. It's not very long. It's only about nine minutes. So I'm going to tag it onto the end of this teaching video. So once you have done your writing, come back and reward yourself by watching the whole film because then you're going to be working on, uh, you need to have watched the whole film for tomorrow's lesson, actually, um, for you to be able to move on. Okay. Right. I cannot wait to see what you come up with. I have got high expectations for you. You guys are going to do an amazing job. You're absolutely smashing it. So I've got big hopes you're going to be amazing. Right. Good luck with your writing and enjoy the movie. I'll see you soon. Bye.
Thank <laughs> you. 